We are back for the 12th time in Warchant.com, Warchant Multimedia History. It is the Warchant official Gene OG Top 40 list of Florida State's Top 40 football players. He's Gene Williams, uh, founder and administrator. I was going to say managing editor. I was going to give you the post <laughs> of Warchant.com. No, thank goodness Iris has got that job. He's got the tough job. I got the easy one. I echo that. Thank goodness Iris has <laughs> that job. My name is Tom Lang, and we are here Earlier than usual, because Florida State's camp is going to begin earlier than usual, everything is moved up with the trip over to Dublin. And Gene, of all the dozen that we've done before of a top 40 list of Florida State's roster, this may be the most difficult of all of them just because Florida State has a lot more depth. Maybe not as many superstars or or first-team All-American preseason watch list players, but they've got a ton of depth in 2024. Yeah, and that's really, I think, the main thing that jumped out at me when I was compiling this list and everybody's votes. That, uh, you know, when you get there's a lot of guys we're going to talk about here in a minute, some guys that didn't make the list. You're like, how are those not top 40 players? These are starters. These are top 20 players two or three years ago. And I, I just think that's the mark that what's unique about this roster is the, you mentioned absolute depth, which is important. We know attrition happens in season, we know there are injuries, we know stuff happens. And uh, to have a little buffer at some positions, not every position, but have a little bit of a buffer and some experience and some guys that are proven coming off the bench could pay a huge dividends for FSU this season. So we'll take a look quickly at last year's guys who just missed mm-hmm. the cut to give you a sense of uh, they were deep last year. And a couple of surprises from that group from 41 to 50, 41 to 51. I saw Keandre Jones last year was the first guy out. He was a transfer at the time, Gene, offensive lineman from Auburn. But Keandre Jones was one of those eight rotational pieces on the offensive line for Florida State. He had a decent impact. Ryan Fitzgerald came in at 42 oh, last year. Gene, we, we dropped the ball on that one. Wow. I mean, you think about uh, three or four kicks, specifically yeah. one on the road at Clemson from just under 50 yards. If he doesn't make that kick, Florida State certainly yeah. loses that game and the perfect season goes by the wayside. Fitzy was in a battle for his job all yeah. the way through fall camp, but he ended up being a, a giant, important player for Florida State. Byron Turner at 46 was obviously one of those top four guys at defensive end. He was in that rotation for FSU. Uh, Alex Mastromano at 50. Gene, we thought the offense was yeah. going to score 50 points a game, but Mastro had a big role in, in Florida State success last year, especially when the injuries mounted for FSU. Mastro was excellent. And then at 51, here's the last guy on the list. That's Conrad Hussey. And this was mm-hmm. a safety prospect. Gene, he was a true freshman last year. He thought maybe he could get into garbage time situations. A couple of reps here or there. Conrad Hussey was getting meaningful reps for Florida State in 2023. So just a sampling there, anything that stands out to you to prove that even though they might not make our lists, these guys could be very important come October and November. Well, it's funny doing this, how we, you know, one of the toughest things to do is where do you put kickers? Yeah. You know, I mean, we, we battled that forever. And I, I know Jeff forever refused to vote for kickers. I mean, we had that battle with him like, Jeff, what are you doing? Like Aguayo would be there. You're really, you're not going to vote him in the top 40? I mean, the best kicker in the country. But I get it. I mean, they're, they're only, some games they have no factor at all. They just sit on the bench and they do kickoffs. Um, so I understand that. But yet at Florida State, in my mind, I mean, I, I go way back, obviously. I've seen the wide rights. I've seen Florida State miss several na- potential national championships because of poor kicking. So to me, this one of the criteria is the importance of the position and the importance of what they can contribute. As you mentioned last year, two or three games, without the if we had the 2022 Fitzy, Florida State probably loses those games. But the 2023 Fitz Magic was magic, and Florida State was able to win games. So to me, the kickers have to be they have to be on that list. I believe they're decent. So I mean, that's my opinion, but I understand why people don't rate them that way. So those are the two guys from last year that just jumped out at me that, in hindsight, if we were to re-rank them, I think they would easily make the top 40, if not the top 30. I agree. And I think to, to give us a little bit of leeway from last year, Tyler Keltner was coming in to compete for the job. Yeah, so true. We did not know who was going to win. Uh, spoiler alert, Ryan Fitzgerald will not be a part of today's discussion because he did make the list. This is about mm-hmm. the guys who just missed the cut. And, Gene, I'm going to start with an interesting prospect because if this player was healthy, if he was healthy for even nine games this season, I argue he would be in the top 25, but it, you can't assume it, and that's tackle Robert Scott. Yeah. He just missed the cut this year. If Robert Scott is healthy, he's a starter for you on this offensive line. At least he should project to be, if not a top reserve. But it's just hard to assume, Gene, that Robert Scott, given the past recent past, is going to be available for FSU for the entirety of the season. Yeah, this is one. I think there's two guys we can look at that if things 
happen a certain way, we may go back and look, wow, we, we totally missed the boat on him. He's one of them. Uh, but, I mean, like you said, Tom, he hasn't played the last two springs. I think he started one game last season. Yeah. At some point, you have to go with your eyes and what you see. The best of ability, you always hear the cliche, is availability. He just hasn't been available. When he has been out there in little moments here and there, he just hasn't looked healthy with that foot. So, I mean, I have to see it to believe it. And, boy, if he were healthy – I mean, he might be your – Tom, I'm a hypothetical throwing it back at you. If he, he went into the season, you knew he was totally healthy. Would he be your number one rated offensive lineman? Um, no, I think that okay. because, because Darius Washington has, has climbed and developed so much the last couple of years, but he's uh, – Gene, he's one of my top two tackles. We'll put it okay, that way. Okay, top two tackles, yes. Yeah. So, I, I mean, I, he's, he's a top – 10, 20-ish type player if he's healthy. And there's an, and he goes from that to being not on the list because we just don't know about the injuries. Oh, 100%. I mean, like, if you just if you did a simple top 22 and then said 11 starters, 11 starters, right? You know, if you just did it that way, I, I don't know that everybody put their list and filled out their list in, in that sense, that the top 22 are offensive and defensive starters. But Robert Scott is going to be a starting tackle for you if he's 100% yeah. healthy. I think one of the things that we're going to discuss over the next couple of months is that the right tackle position is still a question mark. Jeremiah Byers last year was mixed returns, and spring was less than stellar. Now, there's room for Jeremiah Byers, Gene, to step up and, and become something even more. That happens all the time. Guys develop and they become star players. I think Darius Washington is going to do that, and more people are he's going to be more of a household name this year for Florida State. Robert Scott, if you told me right now he's 100% healthy for 2024, I think he's a starter. And I, I, I'm oh, pretty yeah. sure that he's a starter for Florida State, especially with the issues at right tackle. So um, we'll see what Robert Scott's status is as we get into fall camp. Mike Norvell says, Gene, uh, for, for what it's worth, Mike Norvell says he's on track to be available for the fall. What yeah, a I hope so. That would be something if he was. That would, we worry about that depth of tackle, Tom. You just brought that up. But, boy, if he's available, you rest a lot easier at night. The quarterback should rest a lot easier at night knowing he's got some depth there. It feels like a luxury at this point. At least that's mm -hmm. the way the fans assume it. We'll see if Coach has it 100% um, correct as we cover it on Warchant.com and fall camp. Byron Turner is another name, Gene. I, you know, he was part of last year's list of guys yeah. who just missed the cut. Um, what gives here? Is it just because Florida State dipped into the portal and brought in so many other options in addition to returning Patrick Payton? Are we not respecting Byron Turner enough? What do you think? I mean, I had him at 40, so I mean, I, I can go ahead and slip that out there. I mean, I had him barely in the top 40, but I mean, he was pretty, he was productive coming off the bench last year. I mean, he's, he looked fine. He looked solid from what we've seen, but I mean, I think you nailed it. I mean, I think I was, and I'll ask you, Tom, Lola Hala came in. I wasn't really impressed with him. To me, he's the number three right now, defensive end. I think at best, Byron Turner is the fourth, and that, they're going to get in the rotation. He's going to contribute, but and he may even have some competition there as well for that kind of four spots I, it's just one of those like I said he made my top 40 but I definitely see the argument in the other end because there's there's a lot of players kind of in his stratosphere battling for that rotational position I didn't have Byron in my top 40 and look I, I could be made to look foolish in this particular situation by season's end that's going to happen this year with how deep this roster is so there are mm -hmm. going to be guys that didn't make our lists that end up top 30 players or better it's just that last year I thought when Byron Turner was on the field, along with Gilbert Edmond, the drop-off was so steep that it, I was holding my breath. We talked about this, Gene, on our post-game shows often. I'm like, man, they really rotate guys an awful lot and in, in key situations. And I think Florida State knew that they had to go get depth because not only did they grab a, a potential starter and star in Marvin Jones Jr. and in mm -hmm. a second-team All-Pac-12 player in Sione Lolohea, but Tomiwa Durojaye from West Virginia yeah, one, is yeah. either going to play end or interior. I think, Gene, their confidence in Byron Turner is going to determine where Durojaye ends up playing. If they're confident what Byron brings to the table, then Durojaye could slide inside and play D-tackle. If they feel like they need a little bit more in terms of strength on the edge, then maybe Tomiwa plays on the edge. But Byron Turner, again, does not make the top 40. Let's hope for his sake, Gene, that in January when we're doing a recap, we're saying we dropped the ball on that one. A couple of linebackers that are on this list. Mm -hmm. Interestingly enough, uh, Omar Graham was a player who reportedly last year was playing injured. And, and that would make some sense to me, Gene. It was, again, a, another issue where Florida State was rotating a lot of backup players into high leverage situations and games. I was less than impressed. If he was indeed banged up, then there's a pathway to seeing development and more production this year. Another name on that list, and I'll let you pick from there which one you want to talk about more, is transfer Sean Murphy. Now, this is the Alabama linebacker transfer that arrived on campus for spring camp with a lot of fanfare and a lot of potential. 
but spring was less than stellar. It looked like Gene, frankly, just from my eyes, seeing the practices that I did and watching the uh, Garnet and Gold Showcase, he's still thinking. He's still swimming with the yeah. information uh, about how to play linebacker in the system, and he's not playing with instincts. What do you think about those two particular linebackers? Well, I think interesting. I'm not sure. I know on Omar Graham, I think I voted him the highest. I may have on Sean Murphy, too. So, I mean, I'm kind of like I have both of these guys higher than most. And the reason for that is, I mean, you lost your two main linebackers, your two top linebackers from last year. Somebody's got to step in and beat that role. I mean, Omar Graham has been in the system now for three years. I guess I'm, Tom, I'm buying the injury thing. Yeah. I saw some stuff in practice before. I thought he was better than he looked out last season. So I buy that. I think he's got, he knows the system. He's gotten a lot more snap. You know, he's got a decent number of snaps out there. I'm buying that he's going to be healthy and he could even be, to me, he's a good chance he's a starter. So to not be in the top 40 and be a starter, I mean, to me, that to me, that one screams out the most. Now, Murphy, you're absolutely right, Tom. It was we were he was very average from what we saw in practice in the spring. I think we all expected more. But I had to vote him high because of a couple things. I mean, position of need. It's the biggest position of need, losing those guys in the pedigree. I mean, this is an Alabama transfer that was a top 50 recruit on two different services coming in. You got to think there's some talent there. When he does catch on, I don't think there's another linebacker on the roster that has the pedigree and the potential talent of Sean Murphy. So I could see both of those guys being real contributors this season, but you, they're red flags. So I also understand why some people did not have them in the top 40. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see how this fleshes out with who guys who made the list. Um, you know, there's a kid like Blake Nicholson that we're not talking about today mm -hmm. on this video. There's a player that came and from all from Auburn, Gene, sight unseen, that may have made the list instead of the Alabama kid who has a spring camp under his belt. So this is a fascinating discussion. We do know that DJ Lundy's return was massive, and he's going to yeah. be way up on that list. Uh, but as for Omar Graham, the only two staff members to put him in their top 40 were Gene and Corey. Will they be right at the end of the season? Uh, I'm going to get to the quarterback in just a minute, but one name I want to throw out there that was off of our notes, Gene, is tight end Jackson West. This is a player mm -hmm. who comes in at number 46 on our list. We do rank him out past 40, but we don't publish those. He was 46th on our list. Just his blocking ability. I think that this is a skill, Gene, that we don't have an awful lot of at Florida State in 2024. Inline tight end responsibilities. Kyle Morlock leaves something to be desired as an inline blocker. I think it's too much too soon for Landon Thomas. So Jackson West could be very important in that equation as somebody who is a true blocking tight end. He actually got a lot of time doing as much late last year when they were kind of cooling on Marquise and Douglas as Biscuit has left the program. It's the hands. It's the yep. hands. You even saw routine catches in the showcase were made to look very difficult. If, if West's hands come along, this could be a player who would make the top 40 list. Those are just my two cents. You can comment on that, Gene, or the backup quarterback who did not yeah. make the top 40. Oftentimes, the backup does make our top 40, but that is uh, redshirt freshman Brock Glenn. Your thoughts? Just real quick on Jackson West, I think, I mean, I, you know, it's one of those things that's not very exciting to talk about the the blocking, and you're right, he does bring that to the table. I guess I kind of got, I, I fell more for the eye candy. I can hint, I, I had Landon Thomas up there. I voted him just because it, just the talent, The I think, by the end of the season. I mean, this is a guy, he, he did really well in the spring. I'm very, obviously, just coming into Florida State being a freshman. I really think the sky's the limit for this young man. I know we're not supposed to vote on potential if we did, I think he'd be super high. Um, but I think there's enough potential there that I think he's going to be a contributor this year. And I just, I obviously can't put three tight ends uh, in there to me. So, <laughs> uh, okay, you did. I just, I can't, there's only two linebackers in the top 40, but we're going to have three tight ends. Come on. Yeah. Um, so I, I just couldn't do it. I had to pick one of the others. So I went with Landon Thomas. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Me, go ahead with it. Go have the quarterback, though. I, I will in a second. Just uh, 35 for me and Jackson West. I was the, the highest on staff. Ira had him at 36, which is not too okay. far behind, and Corey at 38. Uh, it's just that, that in this offense, that particular position is very important for Mike Norvell, mm -hmm. the way he schemes it up. And if you don't have a ton of receiver options, they might run the ball a little bit more and put more big guys out there on the field. So to Brock Glenn, you know, Gene, in that game yeah. against Louisville, you could tell that he did not prepare with first-team reps an awful lot um, you know, as, as Florida State was preparing for the ACC championship. I think Tate Rodemaker was getting more reps uh, before that game. Uh, Brock Glenn yep. finally leads the team onto the field for the first drive, and you could tell that he was swimming 
and it, everything was moving way too fast, and Mike Norvell called the game around him. In fact, it was Lawrence Toafili and the Wildcat that uh, you know mm-hmm. keyed Florida State's only touchdown drive as they completed the 13-0 run in the ACC championship. But Brock looked a lot better yeah. in blowout fashion. I get it in the Orange Bowl, but if you're just judging process, performance, speed of thinking, arm power, Brock looked a hell of a lot more comfortable in that situation in the Orange Bowl, and that projects nicely for him in the offseason. He would be, I would think, Gene, the odds-on favorite to lock down number two. Even though Luke Croman Hawk is has much fanfare as a true freshman on campus, we think that Brock Glenn is the primary backup going into fall. Yeah, I agree with that 100%. And you mentioned the progress in the Orange Bowl. I, I, to me, it's even more in the spring. Um, there was much more consistency. Like you said, he wasn't swimming. The, the ball was coming out quicker. He was more decisive. So he's what you exactly want from a young quarterback is just to show he's picking up the system. He's getting more confident. He's on that trajectory. I mean, remember early on spring, it was like there was never really a battle. But, I mean, you really between DJ and him, it really wasn't a whole lot of difference. I think DJ pulled away in the last couple of weeks to clearly be the top quarterback. But, I mean, that shows you how much he's come along. And I've always been – Go back and look. I think I pretty much always put at least in my top 40 the backup quarterback on there if there was a clear number two because to me, again, I go back to the importance to the team and I get it's contingent importance. Mm-hmm. But with Florida, I mean, every school sees us and Florida State's been no exception. There have been so many starting quarterbacks that have not made it through every single game. And even Brock Glenn has to come into one game on a spot start. That's going to justify a top 40, assuming he just doesn't blow up, but I don't think he will. I think he's he's developed enough that he can help Florida State in that capacity. So I'm, I'm all about Brock Lynn. I think he should have been in the top 40. Um, I hope I'm wrong because that means DJ went the whole way and did fine. Uh, but I, I just think having it, we, you see it in the NFL all the time too. If these guys, those, I mean, you saw the New York Jets last year. You cannot just depend on one guy. You have to have that quality backup quarterback. And I think Florida State has that with Brock Lynn. Yet three members of our staff put a backup quarterback in their list. So they're taking your wise words, Gene. Typically, this does work out this way, where the the backup has to at least come in for a drive or a quarter or something along those lines. I was not one of those members of the staff who, who was wise. Uh, but Matt Lasser had him at the highest rating, number 34. Gene, you had him at 38th. And Aslan had him at 37th. One thing to note on this is that in his last two stops, his last two seasons, DJU, has had the backup quarterback come in and either replace him, in the case of Clemson with Kate Klubnik, or come in for drives early in games. Uh, this was something that happened uh, with the offense out there in Oregon State. Their head coach, I think it's Jonathan Smith, uh, now is over at Michigan State. Uh, they brought in a stud young quarterback for the third drive of the game in all Pac-12 competition. So hmm. DJU is no stranger to having the backup appear and it, it either being an outright battle or something to cultivate development for the future we'll see how that develops here at florida state with mike norvell hopefully gene obviously brock glenn gets to play in a lot of garbage time but that remains yes. <laughs> coming up in the next video we are breaking down our number 36 player all the way to the 40th player on the 2024 war chant top 40 you can find that breakdown of those players already on warchant.com irish Ophel has penned the article again uh, the panel it's a large panel of very talented football minds here, if I do say so myself, for our staff. Gene Williams has seen Florida State football for a longer, maybe longer than he's willing to admit, but uh, a lot of Florida State football, so he knows what his eyes are telling him. Our own Jeff Cameron, managing editor Ira Shofel, Corey Clark, Aslan Hajavandi, Matt Lasser, myself. We put these numbers together, and then we average them all out. We come to our staff consensus for our top 40. We get a lot right. And some we have egg on our face at the end of the season. It's always fun to compare notes. Uh, Gene, any final thoughts before we actually get into the countdown as uh, Ira and I will be doing that video later this week? Um, no, the, other than I think uh, fans really had to stay tuned to this because this has been one of the most interesting top 40s we've ever had to do, even going down to the number one pick. is I think I wrote about the other day, it was the only time, I think, in the history of our top 40 all 12 years where there were three different players got votes for number one. It's usually so cut and dried who number one is, and it really isn't this year. I thought I, I thought I was going on a limb who I picked number one. I'm not going to say. It obviously, it wasn't who most people think, but then I was surprised another another member of the staff came in and also voted that player number one. So, and I think it's I, I think don't, most people probably won't guess who that is. So you'll have to stay tuned to it. So I I'm excited to see how this plays out, the discussion, the debate, because I think I want to hear what other people's viewpoints are on this. Yeah, this is fascinating. So our one player who received two number one votes 
ended up at number six in our yes. Composite. Uh, and I wanted to get in on that debate because I've got a real issue with that. I tend to agree. <laughs> I'm just checking my. Well, no, I, I, I'm partially to blame. So maybe I need to be on the <laughs> kind of line. Next time on the War Chant Top Forty, I'm going to tell you the positions that we're breaking down. Oh. I like to do that as a tease. You're going to have a defensive back, a running back, two defensive tackles, and a tight end who just made the cut, tied for 39. Mm. For Gene, I'm Tom. Our thanks to director Ben behind the scenes for putting together all the beautiful footage that you're seeing here on WarChan TV. Do us a favor, hit the like button underneath the video and subscribe to the channel. Be on the lookout because we are breaking down every single one of the top 40 players for Florida State in 2024. It's an awesome exercise to get you through the offseason. Head to WarChant.com for the written features as well. We'll talk to you next time right here on WarChant TV.